Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. A major donation from the Waite Family Kind World Foundation was announced today. It's to promote youth vaccination in Sioux City schools. And we have the details in our top story at 5. The announcement came at a press conference for youth COVID-19 vaccination held at the Sioux City Museum Plaza. $10,000 will be handed out as incentives for children 12 and over who proved they were immunized between July 30th and the end of September. With parental approval, of course, the kids can sign up to enter for their chance to win one of 50 $200 gift cards. Siouxland District Health Director Kevin Green spoke on why kids getting vaccinated before school is vital to combat against the spread of COVID-19. In Woodbury County, we have right at 40% of our population that has been fully vaccinated is what it is. The state actually has a 47%. So many times Siouxland has found ourselves in the leadership role amongst any initiatives across the state. At this point, we're lagging. For more information about the Children Vaccine Incentive Initiative, you can check out the Sioux City Community School District's website. There will be a link to that on our website. Of course, that's Siouxland Proud. Com. Sioux City schools are also altering their plans for their annual back to school night. That's to allow for more social distancing to take place. The annual event provides students and their families the opportunity to tour the district's schools, meet the teachers and drop off school supplies. The number of attendees in each building will be limited the same as last year. The event is scheduled for August 19th. Appointment and tour times are varying by grade. We have all the information you need online at the address on your screen or the free KCAU 9 mobile news app. And as COVID-19 is making its resurgence here in Siouxland, you might be wondering why are vaccinated people still getting sick? Local experts are answering these questions and much more tonight during our live town hall event. It's called Coronavirus Vaccines and Variants. Again, that's right here on KCAU 9 following our 6 p.m. regularly scheduled broadcast. It will also be available to you online. Again, the address on your screen or the KCAU Facebook page. Nebraska's minimum wage has not increased since 2016, but one group tonight is hoping to change that. The organization is called Nebraska Appleseed, and they've created a petition to raise the minimum wage by a dollar each year until 2026 to get to $15 an hour. Their petition needs 87,000 signatures to qualify for the November 2022 ballot. Nebraska's minimum wage jumped in 2015 from $7.25 to $8 an hour and then rose to $9 an hour the following year. Tune in tonight at 10 to hear how Siouxlanders are reacting to this possibility of a higher minimum wage. U.S. consumer prices rose yet again in the month of July. This is according to new numbers released by the Labor Department and U.S. Consumer Price Index. The report shows last month inflation rose about 5.4 percent. D.C.'s Raquel Martin reports on why Republicans are sounding an alarm and the White House says they remain optimistic. Wednesday, President Joe Biden announced his administration is taking new steps to lower consumer prices at the pump and the grocery store after a new report showed higher inflation for the third month in a row. Crack down on what some major players are doing uh, in the economy that are keeping prices higher than they need be. President Biden also announced plans to fix supply chain bottlenecks he says are likely causing price increases. So my administration is bringing together port operators, shipping lines, labor unions to speed up the port's operation. The White House insists higher prices are temporary and say the latest numbers show the economy is rebounding. But Republicans warn if Democrats force through their $3.5 trillion budget plan, prices could soar even higher. And the last thing we need to be doing right now is pouring more fuel on that fire. Republican Senator Bill Haggerty says the additional spending will only hurt the middle class. I don't think the American public wants this. But Wednesday, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer defended the massive package. It's transformational. Schumer says raising taxes on the wealthy and corporations to bankroll the plan will ensure inflation rates do not spike. Some are worried about inflation. The way to deal with that is to make sure you pay for it. We intend to pay for it. Still, some economists say inflation could remain a concern for the foreseeable future. In Washington, Raquel Martin, KCAU 9 News. A Nebraska state trooper has been wounded and a suspect killed in an early morning shootout. It was outside a home in 
Juniata, a village about, of about 800 people. Now, the Nebraska State Patrol says 35-year-old Brooks Hacker had gotten into an argument with his girlfriend. It then turned physical. The woman called 911 and reported being shot at. Troopers and county deputies surrounded that home and did try negotiating with the man. They were repeatedly met with gunfire. One trooper was shot in the arm. The patrol tonight says tear gas was also deployed into that house, and Hacker walked out holding a gun. A single shot was fired, killing Hacker. The trooper who fired that shot has been placed on administrative leave. Iowa authorities are on the lookout tonight for a work release escapee out of Fort Dodge. That escapee is 31-year-old William Elridge. He is 6 feet tall and weighs about 237 pounds. The Iowa Department of Corrections says he failed to report to Fort Dodge work release yesterday. He was admitted to the facility sometime late May. He was convicted of domestic abuse and assault. Anyone with information about his location or whereabouts tonight is asked to contact their local police department. Meanwhile, the widow of a man struck and killed on a South Dakota highway is attempting to block the release of her husband's mental health records. A judge recently ordered several hospitals and clinics to provide records about Joseph Beaver's psychiatric state. This after the lawyer for Attorney General Jason Roundsburg alleged that Beaver's September 12th death may have been a suicide. The judge was to review those records, then decide if they're relevant to Roundsburg's upcoming trial. He is the attorney general of the state of South Dakota. Jenny Beaver, the widow, argues that she has substantial right to privacy under the South Dakota Constitution and that the records release might disclose sensitive information about her as well. The case continues. Time now for our first check on the weather. Another warm, sunny day for the most part here in Siouxland, Scott. Yeah, some beautiful weather out there today, Sophie. We did enjoy the sunshine as temperatures were able to shoot upward into the 80s and 90s. 90 degrees this afternoon in Sioux City and Norfolk, 94 Denison, 84 today in Storm Lake. As you look at the month of August overall, you can see that we've had an even spread of cooler and warmer than average days. A streak of three consecutive days with high temperatures at 90 or above in Sioux City. Overnight lows should dip back into the 60s across the area, 63 for Sioux City, 66 in Yankton, and 64, the overnight low in Norfolk. Back in a few moments to talk about a slight rain chance this weekend and a cool down coming our way as well. Sophie? Thanks, Scott. If you live near Sioux City, you might have noticed some more activity in the skies. The 114th Fighter Wing, based out of Sioux Falls, is here for training exercises. From August 10th to August 12th, the 114th Fighter Wing is based out of the 185th Air Refueling Wing. The Fighter Wing will be doing its 2021 readiness exercise. That's to test its ability to deploy to unfamiliar locations within a limited time frame. This is the first time fighter jet operations were held at the 185th in Sioux City since 1998. Coming up tonight at 6, you'll hear from the 114th directly to hear a little more about their training mission while here in Sioux City. Roughly 80,000 pounds of food was distributed by the Alliance to Defeat Hunger. That's a partnership between Americold, Tyson, and Feed the Children. On a 10-city tour around our nation tonight, volunteers from the community, plus three organizations, passed out protein, dry goods, and even books to hundreds of people that lined up in the Sunnybrook Church parking lot. But this is much more than just a one-time pickup event. The group says they will continue to supply local food pantries here in the coming months. And we will align with the local, we call them agencies, and in this case it's the Sunnybrook Hope Center. So we're uh, thankful to be able to work with these partners to be able to provide these families with the food boxes that they need. So coming out of COVID, or actually as it's repeating again, these families are needing more and more support, it seems, as we go. Sioux City was the seventh stop for the group on their way down to Oklahoma City. And a school kicks off in less than two weeks now. One local church is making sure students have what they need. Members from Trinity Lutheran Church in Sioux City packed up about 60 backpacks, all filled up with school supplies for students in kindergarten through fifth grades. Those school supplies will go to students at Bryant Elementary School. An administrator with Trinity Lutheran says she hopes the backpacks will help all of those in need. We believe it's our service to the community. Um, we believe that God would want us to help those in need. Uh, our mission team, that's kind of what they do here at Trinity. We find different things in the community that we can help with. All supplies came from community donations with 10 backpacks given to each grade level.
Starting today, the city is asking for your feedback regarding the removal of some traffic lights in Sioux City on a section of Hamilton Boulevard. The intersections at West 3rd, 8th, and 22nd Streets are being impacted. The flow of traffic will be tested for the next 90 days. Stop signs are in place. We do have a link to provide your feedback online if you're interested as well as a phone number to call instead of hopping online. That's SiouxLandProud.com where you could find that phone number on the KCAU 9 mobile news app. Well, painting sneakers can sound like a fun project, but for one teenager, it's become a business. He's already got a customer who plays in the NFL. How he got that deal and more coming up in about 10 minutes. And there aren't going to be too many breaks in this warm and sunny pattern as high temperatures look to stick in the 80s. We are tracking one chance of showers coming our way this weekend. We'll detail that with the 9 on 9 forecast coming up next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. 86 on Monday, mostly sunny skies. Most of next week also expected to be quiet, but there is another chance of some rain coming our way next Thursday as it looks like another cold front will begin to organize then and cool us off into the upper 70s and lower 80s probably for next weekend. We've had some foggy mornings as of late. That held true this morning as well. John Murphy in Sioux City snapped this picture, kind of eerie out there. If you have a picture that you want to share, find our website SiouxLandProud.com, go to the weather tab, send us your photos. Good way to describe that kind of beer. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. We've had some foggy conditions out there. All right, thanks, Scott. Well, one priest isn't just serving people in their own faith, he's also serving up flavor. How a four year old girl is helping craft the perfect recipes coming up in about seven minutes. But first, it's wearable art. And a defensive lineman for the Browns is a fan. How one teenager's show with painting business is taking off next. A new variant of the coronavirus has COVID cases on the rise in Siouxland and across the country. So what does it all mean for you and for your family? We'll ask the experts and get the answers. Coronavirus, vaccines and variants, tonight at 6.30 on KCA. An Ohio teenager is making a name for himself tonight in the world of shoe art, lacing up with one of the biggest defensive stars in the NFL. Jennifer Jordan brings us his story. is priming, sanding and prepping for one of the biggest clients of his short yet budding career, NFL defensive lineman Miles Garrett. Jory Oakleaf getting the athlete's attention while working a freelance photography gig at a P-League basketball game in Cleveland. And Miles Garrett's brother happened to be there, Jeremy. So I got to talking with him and he liked my work, so he gave me a trial run and I made each of them a pair of shoes. They loved it, and that's how he ended up here doing Miles' cleats. The 19-year-old working inside his home art studio in Beach City, Ohio, creating the airbrush design for Garrett's custom cleats, expected to be worn during a Browns preseason game in the upcoming weeks. Jory's artistic talents, a family affair. They came from my mom's side. She actually runs her own business, and she designs most of the labels and everything there. So they really have something that stands out. We first introduced you to Jory two years ago when his company, Jay's Custom Kicks, was just getting off the ground, formally refurbishing old shoes. Now the 2020 Fairless High School graduate skipping college to focus on his brand. So I'll spend a whole day uh, on multiple pairs. And get this, Garrett won't be the first NFL player to wear Jory's custom shoes. His work on national display Thanksgiving 2019, when D. Virgin, cornerback for the Detroit Lions, wore his customized camouflage cleats on live TV. And News Nation Prime comes your way every night at 7, and at 6 Central is the Donlin Report. Here's a preview of what they have there tonight. Tonight on the Donlin Report, new mass drama across the nation. The fiery debate at a public meeting in Texas. We're live with the county commissioner who was kicked out of a meeting and the judge who decided to override the governor's mass ban. Now here's Leland Vittert with a preview of On Balance. Thanks, Joe. Chicago crime becomes a conversation nationwide. The state attorney here, Kim Fox, joins us live in studio for an exclusive interview. What she has to say about the city's violent crime spike that's coming up on Balance tonight, followed by News Nation Prime. 
Again, that show comes your way every night at 7 o'clock on News Nation. You can see some of the channels listed here or just be sure to check your local guide. The recipes have uh, biblical inspiration and their joyful cooking has been turned into a whole series now on Facebook. The story of this cooking duo next. As a priest, he's always serving his community with inspiration, but that's not all Bill Wood shows us how he's serving them at the same time. All right, everyone, so today we're making what kind of cake, uh, Lucy? Pentecost cake. Uh, the priest now serves good faith with good taste. The spirit came on them like tongues as a fire. He's the chef behind the perfect pulpit, Facebook Live. We're going to start with our dough. He gets help from an about-to-be five-year-old gourmet girl from the church. That is huge. Her name is Lucy. When I, like, go to church and they say, like, I'm going to do more, and then Mommy thinks, okay, I'll, I'll think of more. What's today? Waffles. Waffles. Lucy's mom, Becky, We're cooked up the idea to put Father Cooper and her daughter on camera. Let's just do it this way. You can do it that way? Their culinary okay. creations sound like scripture. Sacred salsa, St. Patrick's Day punch. And then for Christmas? Blessed baby Jesus beignets. We're going to pour this. Cooking with Father Cooper gets good ratings. Right in the center. His sermon on the menu reads right out of the Bible. We're going to lift our cover. Oh, that is done. It is done. I was brought up that you never miss a meal with family on a Sunday. What about a Wednesday? drive throughs fine on a Wednesday. Who's the real star of the show, you or Father Cooper? Uh, both of us. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. In the beginning, the there was water, breaking bread. Which will be given up for you. A blessing then and now. What are we going to make today, Lucy? Especially since the show's been renewed for a second season. Amen. <laughs> Taking a live look outside right now, Scott returns with one more check on your forecast. Stay with us. Seems to be uh, the story of the week if you're enjoying summer here in Siouxland. It's here to stay in that humidity. At least most of it seemed to move out today. Yeah, it was really humid for the past few days out there, Sophie. So a nice break from that. A low temperature of 63 degrees for tonight. Mostly clear and seasonal. A beautiful day for tomorrow with a high temperature in the upper 80s and sunny skies. And there will be a light breeze along the way. Checking the 9 on 9 forecast here. We have a small chance of catching on to some showers and storms Saturday. It looks like it'll become slightly cooler with highs in the low to mid mid 80s and then another small chance coming our way next Thursday. All right. Thanks so much, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us again here at six with Tim and Jake. Until then, have a great night, everyone.